Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to the second part of the series on Mern Stack Development. Now, in my previous video, I have explained to you about what is Mern Stack Development, given you a very uh, elaborate introduction to the uh, Mern Stack Development, the different technologies. Now, I've also explained to you about React.js. Now, coming to the next uh, tech stack, in Mern Stack, which is Node.js. Now, what is this Node.js? Uh, in my previous video, I've covered uh, about React.js. So over there, I told you that React.js is especially used for the client side when you want to build the UI or the user interface for your web application. Now, web application UI comes under the front end of the web application where you are dealing with making the or developing the front end or the client side. Now, what do you think which tech stack will be involved in the back end? Today's video will be talking about the back end part because in the previous video, it was all about the front end part. Now, in this back end part, I'm going to be covering about Node.js and Express.js and uh, MongoDB will be covered in the separate video because it's a database. It's also definitely in the back end because you're linking the back end with MongoDB, but I would like to show it to you in a separate video after this because that will give you a clear picture about what is MongoDB because that's again no SQL database. You should be familiar with the features of MongoDB, uh, some of how to you know uh, create clusters, you know uh, operate with MongoDB, Atlas, and so on. So covering to in this video, it's all about backend development. Uh, so what is backend development? Backend development, uh, you know, it deals with rather than UI, it deals with the server logic. Right, the the uh, business logic basically in all the operations. Now, when I talk about the operations, uh, remember in my API video, I was talking about uh, the. HTTP methods like when a user makes uh, methods like uh, say it makes any uh, any request like HTTP requests or something like uh, get post put patch and so on. So those are HTTP methods or requests. So on passing that, what do you think these CRUD operations will do in the backend? In the backend, it's a server which is operating on those and that will be passed in through that endpoint, which is API linking the front end and the backend. So in Node.js, which comes in the server side, what is Node.js? So it is basically a JavaScript runtime environment, which is open source and it is for the backend server side web application. So it's developing the server side web application. Some of the features of Node.js are uh, enlisted over here. Let me read that to you. So this is asynchronous and event driven. So basically the most important feature of Node.js is asynchronous. Now, what does this asynchronous term imply? So basically it uses an event driven. When I tell about or talk about the you know dynamic nature of JavaScript, because it's allowing you to, when you hit or click a button, right? When a user clicks a button, there is an event trigger. Now that uh, there is a concept of event handler. Uh, when an event is triggered, there is a, a event handler or a function, which is nothing but a function, which is, uh, you know, uh, alerting or sending that uh, request, the client's request to the backend. Backend is going to authenticate that using a JWT, which is JSON web token, right? It's uh, performing that. And if the token is valid, then it is going to uh, serve the response to the request sent by the client. Now, that is called as event driven. So Node.js is event driven, non-blocking input output model, which means it is capable of handling a large number of concurrent connections without blocking the execution of other operations. This is very important. Now, when I talked about the word asynchronous, asynchronous it itself implies that there is a, a sense of concur mechanism of concurrence uh, operations taking place. So when there are operations that simultaneously or concurrently taking place, uh, there will be a you know, lot of traffic, a lot of operations. But Node.js has this functionality that instead of killing the other operations, you know, blocking the execution of other operations, it is going to handle all the other operations, concurrent operations together, right? So that is why it is called as asynchronous. It is non-blocking. It does not block any input output model. It makes it well suited for handling real-time applications and scalable network applications. It's very important making it scalable because, you know, in real-time servers, especially the server will be overcrowded, right? You, you have a lot of requests. You just don't have one single request coming in from the user or from the client side. Say what if from the client, uh, from the client side, you have multiple requests coming in asynchronously or concurrently at the same time. So instead of, you know, um, just uh, doing, uh, you know, answering to each operation one by one or, you know, making the other operation wait, Node.js has this capability or feature of handling the multiple uh, operations, concurrent operations at the same time asynchronously. That is why it is very preferred making it scalable. Server-side development because it's often used for building server-side applications such as web servers, RESTful APIs. When I talk about REST, it stands for Representational State Transfer APIs, microservices. It provides a rich set of built-in modules and libraries that enable developers to handle HTTP requests, which is hypertext transfer protocol, manage file systems, interact with databases, and more. This is self-exploratory. Coming to very important 
package manager which is npm while i'll be coding i'll be uh, you know de de showing you this npm where basically this is very important because you need to have something called as this npm which uh, you know you have installed node.js to use node.js or to work on monster project you need to first install node.js in your system that's the only requirement now once you have installed node.js then you need to also in visual studio code or in your command prompt you need to install and import some certain libraries now though about those package manager or libraries you have something called as a npm so npm stands for node package manager uh, node.js comes bundled with npm package manager that allows developers to easily install manage and share reusable javascript code modules hosts a variety of ecosystem of open source libraries and frameworks that's why it can be easily integrated with third party applications javascript everywhere this is you know needless to say i would say because uh, node.js you know it is built on top of it's a javascript framework so because of the high interactivity nature of javascript and the full stack approach it follows it dev simplifies the dev process and promotes code reusability so there is code reusability concept in node.js you know you have modular uh, components and the components which you have defined can also be imported they can also be used in other parts of your web application that's why making it more reusable although it is uh, you know javascript is used for both front end and back end development to sh uh, share code and expertise across different parts of an application node.js serves that purpose then scalability and performance so basically because it is non blocking event driven that we have discussed in the first point it is also able to handle you know large number of concurrent connections efficiently it can handle because of that it is more scalable handling real time communication chat applications gaming streamlining applications so these are some of the areas where node.js is actively can be used so you can also build it for real time communication for large scale applications command line tools now node.js can be used to build command line tools which is cli right a command line interface that is cli and scripts it is an easy way to automate tasks interact with the file system process data perform operations with javascript so it has this command line to set of tools also available one important thing is that it's event driven it is a non blocking asynchronous and most important it has something called as a npm which is node package manager needed to be installed in your environment when you are working with node.js because that is where you will be uh, it, it, uh, you know uh, with node uh, npm where uh, node package manager only you will be able to install the other libraries in your environment now let me like uh, mongodb will be covered in the next part of the video because that's a nosql database let me just go with the js framework for this video which is for the backend in the another back now for another uh, tech stack or javascript framework for the backend we will use uh, apart from node.js right along with node.js we will also have express.js now express.js is nothing but it's a, again a web framework which is built on top of node.js let's see what it is it is popular web application framework for node.js provides a set of robust features and utilities for building web applications and apis as i've already covered it simplifies the process of handling http requests routing middleware management and more now what is this middleware management http request http request i've already explained you you know especially when you talk the features of uh, express js then there is this concept of routing which comes into picture especially it's needed for routing now what is this routing routing as the word says whenever you have a web application or various web pages you need to link a web page to another web page or say a component to another component so how do you do that there is a concept of routing or linking or passing some uh, path you know uh, giving a path to uh, routes a uh, route so that uh, you, your um, application or web page can actually redirect towards that when certain component or functionality is triggered that is as simple as that so routing for routing you are using express js into your environment it allows you to define routes for handling different http methods get post put delete which are the very important for http methods you also have patch and url patterns you can specify callback functions known as root handlers to execute when a specific route is matched right when a specific route route is matched you will see that the uh, corresponding callback function will also be executed enabling the behavior of to you to define the behavior of your application based on the requested urls next one is middleware management now express js is used for managing middleware now what is middleware it uses middleware functions to handle tasks such as parsing request bodies now when you are passing you know when the client is passing a request it has some body now for parsing that request body now then what kind of request is that is that a json request what format is is it a javascript object notation web format or is it a xml format html format or some other format so it's very important to parse the body 
that is why express js is using middleware management and these middleware functions are handling such tasks which are error handling error handling is very important because in case there is an error how do you you know actually handle those errors when you talk in terms of programming object oriented programming when you have errors there are certain try catch blocks you write similar to that even in node js express js you can define such logic of try catch even promise function where you are actually handling errors you can also give different exceptions exception handling so all such uh, different tasks like these along with logging and more as well as authentication can be handled with express js that's the concept of authentication and authorization uh, i would not be delving deep in this video but it is something which you have to be aware of uh, as the word says so authentication is basically whenever you're logging a website or logging a website is very important right when you are actually trying to access some website or content you need to log in first so when you're logging a website you are actually either a server will actually try to authenticate if the user or the client on from the client side the request is authentic or not so it's going to authenticate the request so it's going to actually check if the uh, user who's claiming himself or herself to be one is that the correct user or not so that is authentication now coming to authorization authorization is checking if the user has any access control is there any control which the user has access control and if not it's going to forbid the user from accessing the content of the web website so that is called as authentication and authorization concept so this is again a part of middleware functions then uh, middleware functions can be added globally to the application or specific to certain routes now we have the concept of routes like get root post you can also define routes spe uh, especially for all these uh, handling these different http methods so for handling such methods you know uh, you can add uh, all these middleware functions specific to all these routes or either globally they are executed in the order they are defined and can modify the request and response objects request and response is again very important especially when you talk in terms of client and server side so when you talk in terms of front end back end you need to know the concept behind request and response so request is sent by the client response is sent by the server to the client the uh, you know the connection between them is the api as damn simple as that as i made it so when i talk about request and response express provides an abstraction layer over http request and response objects simplifying their handling you can access request parameter headers so when you are passing request right any body request i was talking about the format now you need to know the type of the format the metadata about the body now what is that uh, about the body right body request you need to know the header basically the query strings the type of the headers request parameters form data as well if there is in case there is a form the data so all these are basically in order to access that you need the concept of request and response similarly you can set response state codes uh, http status codes in case there is an error you need to give the correct http status code in the previous video of api i was explaining you the different status codes like you have status codes like um, i was explaining you it either starts with 2 where you are showing it successful right like if you see 200 it means it's showing okay there is a success in the retrieval of the data in get request 201 especially for uh, starting for uh, successful creation or when you are passing a successful post request uh next even if you are starting if you see your http status code starting with 3 it means a redirection error 4 stands for some it can be a client side error 5 is for a server side error so all these indicate some kind of error so for defining such http status codes again you need to set response state send data back to the clients in various formats say be it in html json uh, xml format and so on now coming to on uh, the feature of express js which is template engine now what is this template you know there is a boilerplate code boilerplate is some standardized code that you can follow so even for uh, you know express you can integrate with different template engines to name a few you have ejs handlebars pugs and this template engine provides you to generate allows you to generate dynamic html pages by combining data with pre defined templates so it's pre defined standardized template format that you can integrate with Uh, allowing easy rendering of these templates and response to requests there is error handling which i have already explained you the concept where you are having this try and catch you know try catch error uh, that those kind of logic in, uh, included so basically middle these are handled by middleware functions 
during the request response cycle you can also build your own custom error handlers or use built in error handling middleware to catch and process errors uh, they basically centralize the error handling logic and improve the overall robustness of your application static file serving now i will explain you what is static file what is dynamic right dynamic is where you have interactivity static is when you are just having say images or you are using css html and javascript involved so express allows you to serve static files as well but directly from the direct making it very easier for you to serve static files so it's because directly it's going to be served from a specified directory it simplifies the process of serving client side assets and improves performance by offloading static files handling to the web server integration with other modules this is the last part of uh, you know last feature of express js which is very again very uh, important integration with other modules now see when i was talking about mongoose uh, the mongo db mysql these are all different databases do you think they are they are a uh, same module or they come under js no definitely not they are not js they are in fact database they are third party now when you talk about that in order to integrate you need some mechanism right so so because of express js only we are easily able to perform integration with mongodb mongoose you know uh, mysql and so on because it integrates seamlessly with other modules and libraries because of the modular architecture extensive ecosystem of express js you can easily incorporate database libraries like mongoose now especially for linking or connecting mongodb database to your node js and express js which is the back end you need a particular library okay the particular library is called mongoose or uh, mongoose and you have to install it in the server side of your web application or uh, database connectors like mysql well, now if you talk in, you know you must have heard about some term called jdbc which is java uh, java uh, jdbc which is java database connectivity okay so it is where you are having java using the java language programming language and you have in the front end you'll be having some gui which is graphical user interface the gui can be either you can go with netbeans id or any some uh, you know an uh, gui interactive gui for the front end part you're using java for that and in the back end you have a database so for the database you're using mysql there need to be some driver or a, to you know drive or uh, you know put some connection between the database and the front end the back end and the front end so for that you're using different database connectors like mysql which uh, also is very prominent in jdbc so if you have heard of jdbc term which is java database connectivity it will be very simple for you to actually relate what i'm talking with which is integration postgre you can also uh, link it or incorporate database libraries like postgresql into your express applications that was all about uh, express js and node js which serves the back end of your web application I, i hope i have simplified this for you uh, subscribe to my youtube channel stay tuned for more videos and to the next part which i'll be delving further into mongodb then showing you the practical demonstration the different libraries used for building monster thank you very much